Uh, this is a um, interesting case about uh, angiogram of the circle willis. The history is a migraine headache and vomiting for a 31-year-old female. So basically, here's the MRA. Mm -hmm. um, you can see that there's for 30 thumb year old you, you, do, you get a lot of irregularity and nearing a bilateral supercerebellar artery, and also the posterior cerebral artery is irregular here. It's, it's not smooth like this. It's kind of a stenotic uh, at different different segments. So you can see the. Um, source image, for example, let me see. Follow that thing. Now it's narrowed. Now it's back to normal. So that just for example, the left posterior cerebral. Same thing with right side posterior cerebral. Normal, narrowed, and like that. And then the superior cerebellar artery is also pretty obvious. Um, same thing with middle cerebral arteries here. They are just not abnormal for a young patient. So I questioned uh, um, uh, vasculopathy uh, or vasculitis uh, or vasospasm. So I, 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 was, I recommended uh, to correlate whether there was recent trauma or not. I want to see whether any autoimmune disease uh, and check the family history. So a patient uh, was started on a prednisone to, to, to treat, treat presumed vasculitis. At the same time, patient had MRI of the uh, brain, didn't, didn't show any stroke. Uh, one week later, patient still had uh, bilateral occipital lobe stroke, even with prednisone, and there's another s a stroke in the uh, prior lobe. Uh, so this is 2015, and like four years later, a patient had continued to have depression and seizure, and uh, that was an old stroke in the occipital region. Now to show as uh, some subtle stroke. Patient does have some visual symptoms, so we never figure out what's causing those uh, vascular irregularities that that later did cause stroke. So. That is a positive case. Still didn't figure out what's causing it. Uh, even I checked the uh, patient's history until March 2015. No reason. This is the next patient's uh, information. 39-year-old uh, right-hand uh, woman with a history of uh, hypertension, obstructive sleep apnea, and uh, hyperlipidemia with smoking, who was worried about losing a job in the insurance. So anyway, was pretty stressed. Uh, went to his, uh, Mason General after her husband found her attendant. The husband is a police officer and unable to move her lips. The uh, patient was somnolent. Anyway, um, so she she was stressed. That, so that's the history. Okay, good. This is the first CT of 2012. You can see a big time uh, loss of definition of. Lo loss of distinction between gray matter and white matter. This is a preserved gray-white differentiation. This is lost with swelling and uh, mass effect. You can see that look, a clot here, maybe. That's pretty dense here. I would say 60 unit, 60 Hansi unit, uh, we, uh, I'll start calling that blood clot. Patient usually for for acute one that they really the head doesn't t turn right. The CT technology is supposed to correct the uh, obliqueness, oblique orientation of the uh, tilted head. Let me see where the my clot the, the clot right here. There we go. It's hard to call anyway. It's a clearly stroke. So it's really n n radiologically there's not much to say. Uh, but uh, uh, but the history is uh, estrogen uh, on estrogen replacement and smoke and stress and then later result in this large stroke and the patient later died and have uh, organ donation so that's a result. Uh, this is another patient uh, from uh, our local hospital that transferred over to our hospital. Present with uh, high. Uh, 
ventricular hemorrhage and uh, hydrocephalus probably blocking the uh, drainage pathway and then you can see the subarachnoid hemorrhage more on the right side than the left so they're question about what causing it no history of trauma you can see the subarachnoid hemorrhage in frontal but obviously more on the right so we did this um, CT angiogram it was called a uh, normal we couldn't find that uh, aneurysm but the aneurysm is right here so this is, could be easily the bend of these carotid siphon but it's not the bend it's a, it is an aneurysm itself see the sagittal images is too small and then the because of uh, MIP image uh, just make that region very difficult to visualize this is an aneurysm but uh, it's hard to tell mm. coronal images is also here but it's hard to tell so that's why I hate this kind of a, a big field of view cover the brain and neck everything together you just don't see the little side of things this one is a zoom in view but uh, that's that's the aneurysm mm. scroll back and forth it's there and the other side don't see it so in retrospect the non myth picture is good for this bony region because it's, uh, they are less obscured by the bone uh, still the 3d images and we don't have a 3d picture of this patient so the aneurysms showed it pre pretty well that just very obvious and it was late, later clipped so when you look for aneurysm, so you have to re go really check multiple planes and uh, uh, don't, tr especially near the bone, don't trust the uh, MIP images. A and then search, uh, scrutinize the area, the side of the subarachnoid hemorrhage for any subtle things. With, with that much blood, uh, you really have to scrutinize for any hemorrhage, uh, subarachnoid, uh, f look for any aneurysm. So. So this is a 56-year-old female uh, present uh, with headache. Uh, so the, the c get to the chase is there is a large aneurysm rising from the supraclinoid, supraclinoid portion of left ICA, right here. Right here. So on the contrast study you just see it very easily there's a big aneurysm there no question about it and uh, there is uh, there maybe it was a uh, old old stroke here anyway this is finding the surgeon work on it and then clip that and um, nine days later there's something happened the next day showed uh, acute subarachnoid hemorrhage with this big aneurysm that's a uh, January 4th and then January 6th, at the time, the superintendent coiled and, uh, and the subarachnoid hemorrhage is at least not uh, it's smaller, but, but there's more ventricular blood, and then you can see the ventricular blood is more, and the ventricles are larger, it's getting distended. Nine days after the coiling, um, they, they have a, I don't know what's the history, but they are throughout va va vasospasm. What I'm trying to show is the, uh, the appearance of vasospasm on CTA. So basically, I said the basal artery shows some stenosis. I see where that's pretty narrowed here. And I said the um, A1 segment of the anterior cerebral artery and M1 on the left showed a pretty narrowing. See here, there's A1 mm -hmm. is pretty narrowed and M1 is narrowed. Mm -hmm. M1 is narrowed here. Let's see. Uh, everything like a stressed, uh, stretched, pretty narrowed, and then here is narrowed. Compared to the right side, here's a pi good pipe, wide open. This is good normal side, narrow side, mm -hmm. narrow. So that's a vasospasm. It happens like between seven to eight, ten days. Uh, after um, uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage due to irritation that caused by the hypertrophy of the smooth muscle surrounding the artery. So they have to just calcium blocker and then try mm. to treat it and then try to decrease it. Mm. Uh, 
uh, this is a week later, um, maybe under treatment. Uh, I guess uh, this, this uh, maybe is slightly better. What's previous like this? Mm -hmm. So uh, they did an angiogram th that showed uh, mm. there are uh, narrowing here, and the angiogram on the same that sho does show the uh, narrowing of the uh, A1 and M1 segment. It's didn't really improve much for seven days. Uh, this uh, maybe mm. a day later. Mm. This is the angiogram, a totally recovered size. This is abnormal size, narrowed. This is normal. What did I do? Uh, six months later, this is a, this show a better picture, um, re recovery of the luminal size. This is the acute phase of basal artery narrowing, and this is the after, six months later, this after recovered. I guess the bath artery recovery is less dramatic as compared to previous. So this is a history, a 56-year-old female uh, that uh, breast cancer had a chemotherapy, sudden onset headache, show that aneurysm, uh, PCOM, and later presented with subarachnoid hemorrhage and hydrocephalus, or later treated with coil, on that day, nine days later, have severe vasospasm that I showed you, require verapamil, basically a calcium channel blocker, uh, right after the uh, hemorrhage, uh, and then again, uh, uh, the second round is uh, another uh, eight days later. And there was a difference between the, the vasospasm between January 21st and 22nd. Mm -hmm. That's a big difference. So mm -hmm. obviously the second one mm -hmm. works. She has a uh, left. So I guess she have had some uh, ischemia. We never had an MRI to prove it, so we we'll have to treat this uh, uh, spasm really aggressively. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the um, this is a uh, later February fifth. That's a uh, almost a month later. Uh, so didn't have definitive stroke. Maybe some of the white matter is, uh, ischemic uh, is more prominent than before. The ventricle clearly larger than before, uh, but uh, patient complained of uh, some kind of dysphagia or something. So must have, I'm sorry, dysarthria or something. So uh, this is been pretty dangerous. So especially with history of stroke and uh, and on chemotherapy for some kind of breast cancer. So tend to tend to be a, a, uh, how do I say more blood is tend to clot more. And, and then now we're doing. Uh, vasospasm, vasospasm is narrowing the vessel again, so it tends to cause more stroke. But this one, I guess it didn't cause territorial stroke, but uh, we have to really aggressively treating it to prevent any uh, other strokes, like I showed in this case.